going to take this as an opportunity to keep the telemetry program work going until the travel restriction ease. <coughs> and then, as you can see, following phase three, uh, which was started February last year, um, that's when things really picked up a notch. Travel restrictions eased, tourism picked up, which meant the operators were again able to use their flights daily, they could hire more staff, more funding became available, and the Colmet program became involved in a lot of one off restoration projects um, at Green Island, off Cairns, and also Bay Trip to Golf for the Sundays. So uh, this then leads into another question that you want to answer. So what are the outcomes of all this coral planting for coral and reef communities? So to answer this, we conducted baseline fishing benefit surveys using retrofit line intercept transects, um, as you can see in the photo, um, at each reef before any coral net program work started. So this was all done before phase two in August 2019. From these initial surveys, we found that the total coral cover varied between reefs. Um, that's the white percentage that's here in the middle of the pie charts. Um, the pie chart also showed what coral genera was contributing to that total coral cover. So as you can see, the coral communities were also really variable between reefs. Um, just an example, you can see here a polar reef. Um, the pie chart here, this is a polar reef, um, has the lowest total coral cover. And that was mostly made up of soft coral. Um, we made sure to mark out and survey the corresponding control sites for each of these uh, reefs. And we also resurveyed the same marked out plots um, two years later in August 2021. So, how did these sites look after two years of our planting activity? Well, in short, <laughs> the results for hard coral cover were variable. Um, but there was a large significant difference in high coral cover between our planting, what we call a treatment site here, and the control site for a poly reef. Um, so remember, a poly reef started with the lowest hard and total coral cover. We looked into what general was contributing to mostly to this change and found that the our planting site had a significantly higher proportion of aquifera compared to the control site. Um, so given that aquifera was the most commonly outplanted coral genus, we can assume that this increase in coral cover is a result of the outplanting <coughs> that's done by this operator. Of course, um, this result is only after two years. These surveys are conducted every six months. They're still ongoing, so we expect to see a greater difference as outplanting activity increases. Um, the fragments are obviously continue, continuing to grow, and because of the haphazard nature of our planting, um, the operators out plants amongst existing coral cover. We're also exploring ways to improve the survey methods. So next to this photogrammetry to try and better capture the benefit changes that are happening at these coral nurture program sites. As well as monitoring changes in the coral community, uh, we also wanted to work towards ensuring genetic and species diversity is maintained within the outplanting sites. We want to determine the clonality of the population structure of a commonly outplanted coral species, uh, but it's a huge aquifer hyacinthus. So um, we wanted to apply um, this sort of information to colony selection for propagation, feed that back to tourism operators. Um, so we thought we could use the genotyping microarray array developed by the folks at Farms Lab in State of Guinea, um, commonly referred to as the snitches. So aquifora hyacinthus is a tabular aquifora species. You can see it prefers these sorts of um, impressed environments. But as with many coral species in the Indo-Pacific, there was some taxonomic debate regarding this species. So um, we enlisted the help of some taxonomic experts um, that are working to try and solve a lot of these taxonomic uncertainties on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, 
went back through the detailed photographs that we took of each colony. Uh, we consulted again with the experts and came out with samples of three different species. We have uh, two Acapora hyacinthus, here's a slide plus on the left. We have Acapora pectinata up the top. Currently, um, the name actually doesn't exist because it's synonymous with Acapora hyacinthus, but seems to get trouble mm -hmm. otherwise. And then we also sampled a currently undescribed species of tabula acropora, which we're just referring to as acropora ax hyacinthus. Um, but the true acropora hyacinthus, um, even when we ran a separate PC analysis, we found pretty much decent open population throughout the central Great Barrier Reef. So just some key take home messages. Um, through this work, we found that the full net program model is an effective site for locally upstanding coral propagation. The outcomes of outplanting over two years on coral communities is variable, but coral cover can be increased for sites with naturally low coral cover, particularly for commonly outplanted species. Uh, there's also capacity for improving the survey methods to suit the unique haphazard nature of the coral net program outplanting. Um, I also just wanted to note that future work does include monitoring changes in fish communities and abundance at these outplanting sites. And of course, we've further highlighted the importance of molecular studies and understanding baseline genetic diversity to ensure genetic 